Hello everyone, Alden here, Vendors Tech. I uh, wanted to make a short video today, hopefully it'll be short, about uh, some reasons why, as a general rule, and I mean, I don't, I don't sell USI equipment, refurbished or new, and when vendors come to me asking about the equipment that I would recommend them use, I recommend always that whatever options they might have out there that they do not buy or use, USI, FSI, Wittron Group, it's all one company, Vendnet, their equipment. It is terrible equipment. Parts are outrageously expensive, miles higher than anybody else out there. It doesn't matter who their competitor is. Their products are poorly designed, cheaply designed, oftentimes poorly thought out. I mean, just stupid, stupid things and flaws in the design, in my opinion, that flat out make their equipment impossible to work on that makes it expensive and time consuming to work on. It's prone to failure. Many times, many, many of their designs are known to have many issues. This deck I've been working on here, perfect example of some of these problems. And, you know, <clears throat> it may be, it may sound severe to condemn everything a manufacturer has ever made, but I've worked on USI equipment that was made from the very beginning of their equipment until later on and some of their later models. The overall design has never improved. The overall quality has never improved. And in the long run, it, you're going to save tons of money, time and aggravation if you stay away from USI equipment. <clears throat> There's all kinds of cheap machines out there on Craigslist, eBay, or locally that are available to buy a lot of them are USI. And there's a reason for that. It's because people buy them new or whatever, don't want to deal with them, and, and they go cheap. That's the cheapest equipment you can get anywhere is USI. And I know some guys who just buy tons of it and they scrap it out and use it for parts and keep a route going off it, which, you know, if you can make that work, great. But that, that's not the best business model necessarily long term. And especially if you get a large route, you really don't want to rely on used parts you're pulling out of scrap machines. You're going to have to buy new parts and have reliable equipment. And when you have equipment down constantly and it's expensive to repair it, eats into your bottom line and eventually uh, your business is going to suffer. And so just about anybody else out there if it's made in the United States and it's not Sega, Crane, who bought up most of the good brands, AP, National, Dixie Narco, GPL, those are all outstanding equipment brands through just about every model they ever made. Vendo's the same way. They make an outstanding product. Royal does as well. If you're, both of those just make soda machines. Even AMS makes a good machine. So there's lots of other options out there to choose from. All of them made here in the United States. All of them excellent pieces of engineering for the most part. All of them much cheaper to, to uh, repair, to buy parts for, and a lot less time to install parts. So I'm going to show you this deck I've been working on here to demonstrate why I believe what I'm talking about is true. And this is just an example of what I work on every day with, uh, with USI. And the reason why I think it's wise to stay away from their manufacturing, if at all possible. So, so this whole deck is all one piece with the evaporator sitting up here straighter and the fan kind of, you know, up against the evaporator, but I have it all apart. The problem that was, this deck was having was that the evaporator was freezing up. And so recharge, you know, vacuum system out recharged it. It was a little overcharged. And then just poured some water up here. There's a pan right here. It's a plastic V pan and it kind of goes at an angle in here. Um, and then the drain line comes off the bottom there. And I just poured some water in it to make sure that the water drained through it and it came out. And there's a plastic tray that goes right here that's impossible to get out. So this tray, there, there's two nuts here, one here, one here, and then two back on the back side of this that are like impossible to get to. I don't know how you could, would ever get to those. You know, I put, I made an attempt at it with um, a socket ratchet. Uh, and try to get around there, but there's just no room to maneuver. And with all the tubing, I couldn't move the ratchet enough to unscrew them. I might have, after you know, after a whole night of working on it, gotten them loose. But they didn't make this cover to come off here. You cannot get into there. My arm just barely fits through here, and doesn't even fit through here. It gets stuck after part way in. So you can't reach back there. And the drain line comes out. Can't even hardly see it. It's it's in between those two insulated copper pipes. You can kind of see it. My light's right. 
right on it there. It, it, it comes through, the line comes through there, goes down over here under a clip, right there, that plastic clip, and comes over into the drain pan right here. Well, when you have a drain line, like they do on these, that comes down, and instead of being a straight line, it has a low spot and then comes back up again, anywhere in this low spot, you're gonna have any debris that comes down through the lines, stop there, sit, and eventually turn solid or come, become slime and block the line. That's fine if you have a line you can access, but you cannot get to this line. It took me 45 minutes to figure out how to get this line out of there. I had to cut zip ties, which were almost impossible to reach. I had to tear all of this out of here, kind of bend this copper tube, lift this evaporator up out of the way. Um, one problem I've been told by people who've worked on these before, often, that, that happens is that these tubes, this is a new one, this is the one I pulled off of here, um, get or come, come off the bottom of this regularly. And so some guy had put wire around it to hold there, so I had to cut that, and then I had to yank the tube up through this hole. And I'm gonna have to try and feed the new one down through there. I haven't even tried to do that yet. Um, and that was the that was why I was freezing up because the line was clogged, and when a lines when a drain line's clogged, all the water can't drain out. It builds up after it melts off the evaporator, and then it freezes. And it just keeps building up and building up because it doesn't go anywhere. And you have a very, very simple problem of icing up that can be fixed very easily by cleaning the drain line. And it's impossible to do, essentially, on one of these. It, that's, that's a very long project. This whole thing's torn apart. There's a cover that goes up here. I tried taking this cover off, like I said, and it's riveted on. Now, I mean, who uses rivets? on a refrigeration deck. I mean, nobody else I've ever come across in this industry, except maybe Chinese manufacturers that I don't work on anyway, uses rivets. You know, you've got to be able to get into this stuff to work on it. I knocked these, some of these rivets off, hoping to get this cover off of here, and it's not just riveted, it's like glued or welded or something. I, I took a screwdriver and, and pried under it, and I couldn't, I couldn't even get it to budge. So that, that's, that's poor, poor manufacturing. This evaporator, it, I can't get it out of the way. I can't move it. It comes through this cover, which doesn't come off, as one sealed piece. So you would have to cut this line to move that evaporator. Or if you had to take this cover off for some reason, like maybe to, I don't know, you, I, that compressor, I don't, I don't know if anybody could actually replace that. You can't even get to the one leg of it on the, on the back side back there. I have no idea if that's designed to come out of there or not. That would be quite the project to put a new compressor in this. So even if it was designed, that's about the only thing you could possibly replace. The rest of this stuff, condenser, there's no way you're ever getting to that. Check for that for leaks, the evaporator. You're gonna have to cut that off of there um, if you have any kind of major repair. So that is just poorly, poorly built. I, I'm really, really disappointed in the side because this design was this deck is meant to be thrown away. It is not meant to be worked upon to any great extent whatsoever. And <clears throat> the drain line, I mean, <clears throat> that's like this, uh, uh, the simplest of problems that could develop. And the fact they don't let people get to that is just wrong. They could have, and there's an open space down beneath here that some of the water, it's just sitting down here. It's like a sealed compartment that is not even accessible. I don't even know what it's there for, but the, that's full of water too. I can see through this hole, I can't get to that water. Nobody's ever getting to that water. Just gonna sit down there. And if since that is down there, they could have easily made some kind of compartment accessible from this side here, something that people could have gotten into there and accessed that line. So, you know, <clears throat> I just wanted to make a quick video of this and show you some of the problems that USI Manufacturing has. I don't know what models, this deck goes in a lot of models. There's some information over here on a tag. Anyway, keep this in mind when you're buying equipment or when you're deciding which equipment to get rid of. All right, so now I have this whole deck back together. I wanted to show what I had to do to fix it to where I felt like it was fixed properly, um, to where I wouldn't have some of these problems again. Kind of amusingly, I used Dixie parts <laughs> to fix it. So 
that uh, new black tubing in there that you see is the tubes for like Dixie Z models. Can't get the lighting just right too. There we go. And so it's zip tight in there. Used to run along the floor and have a dip in it. I tried to take as much of the dip out as possible by taking that black zip tie and tying, um, tying it up higher to where there's less of a dip. There's still a little bit of a dip in there, but it's not nearly as bad. And I took a clamp also used to hold these onto the E-model tubes to hold it onto the bottom of that drain pan and then cut off the tips of the clamp so that it would actually fit down in the hole. And I think that that's about as good as it's going to get um, for a USI deck. I wanted to correct one thing I said earlier, <clears throat> that opening down there that I could see through the drain hole wasn't an, a, an enclosed area by itself. It was actually this rusty area down here where my, where my light is now. Um, I just couldn't see, it was dark. Uh, and so it all, it, it was a little bit easier to slide that tube up in there than I thought it was going to be because it does come straight down into this cavity and there's not a separate cavity back there. Um, but it's so far back in there behind those tubes that it's very, very difficult to cut my hand a couple of times trying to just reach back in there and I can't even, I can't even, you can't even see it in the video well enough to even try and bother with it. But anyway, it's fixed, I think, about as well as it can be. It's all put back together and hopefully the customer, <laughs> uh, that it'll work for them. Um, and like I say, in the future, if you have the option, try and stay away from the USI because this, in my opinion, is a manufacturing disaster. <laughs>